हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे इन दिस ब्लैकबोर्ड एनिमेशन वीडियो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट इज एन एपीआई दैट यू यूज इनसाइड योर वेब एप्लीकेशंस और एनी काइंड ऑफ एप्लीकेशन दैट यू यूज सो बेसिकली वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस टर्म विद रियल वर्ल्ड एग्जांपल्स सो वी विल यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस टर्म रियली इन डेप्थ वी विल बी टेकिंग अ लॉट ऑफ मोर एग्जांपल्स सो इट्स सोर्स कोड एग्जांपल्स एज़ वेल सो प्लीज हिट दैट लाइक बटन सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एज़ वेल so let's start this tutorial so now guys we will be talking about the full form of this api term here so basically this term is comprised of three words out there which is api so the full form of this term is a stands for application p stands for programming and i stands for interface so this is the full form of api so in the next slide we will be looking at example of this an example guys where apis are used here so inside these two little bit animations you can see that guys we are basically uploading a file to a google drive server here so basically we are dragging and dropping and uploading files here so basically and the second animation we are having this google map live location tracker here gps location tracker so you can see in a nutshell api allows you to connect multiple services and programs with each other so basically you are calling in this api from a browser such as google chrome or firefox and then basically you are calling this an external service or external api which is hosted on other website which is google drive or google maps so basically uh, api acts as an programming interface it hides all the abstraction and only it provides you one url where you need to hit that url and basically you will get the result so in this case we are uploading files we are showing google map location tracker so you can do anything you can upload photos to facebook using their own api every website every social network website provide some kind of api to their endpoint users or developers so that they can build out some more extensive applications wordpress also have their own api so that they can add post google search console also have their own api so that they can build some more applications on top of that so every application every website has their own api and in this example you can see basically we are showing it so api allows you to connect multiple services and programs so now guys we, the question arises that how to call this api so basically you can see inside this animation how to call this api so you can call this api from the browser itself or any rest api client such as curl so you can see we have the client and we have the server so client actually represents the browser from which you are calling the api it can also be curl client also or in the command line itself so the nice thing about using an api guys it can be called from any programming language either it can be node js javascript php python any framework you can call this from react js angular so it is not dependent upon any specific programming language it's just an interface you can call this from any programming language any backend server so it's the nice thing about this api so basically it just hides the abstraction between the two computer programs so you just need to call this api by going to a specific endpoint or url so that you can use it with any programming language so there is no restriction so now we will be looking at guys how basically the response is returned from an api so whenever you call an external api such as google drive google sheets or youtube data api or any sort of external api how that data is returned to us in the browser so this data is returned in two formats first is xml format which is very old format so whenever the api was created the very first uh, format was xml which which is extensible markup language it is similar to html but it's little bit complicated but nowadays nobody uses xml the trendy response is javascript object notation which is called as json and these are special javascript objects guys which makes it very easy to work with apis how to parse the response so you can see in both these animations the right hand side is the json here you will see inside this object we have different kinds of properties here so each property represents some kind of data which is returned from an api so we can display this data inside the browser by using the object notation here and on the left hand side we have this xml format so you can just see here xml is little bit tougher as compared to the json one you can see we are requesting this data inside the url here 
so whenever we hit this url we get the response body in both of these occasions here so you can see a little bit tough here in xml as compared to the json one so it totally depends upon developer to developer some apis don't offer json some apis only offer xml so it also depends upon whichever api you are calling but in normal notation i will definitely choose json over xml so now guys we will be talking about uh, the authentication in api so basically authentication simply means that you have the access in order to use that api so similar example will be google login here inside this animation you can see that guys basically whenever you have uh, visited any website there is two options out there you can go log in with facebook you can log in with google so every social media website provides this login features in every application so that their users is uh, very easily can log in inside different applications using their google account or facebook account so why they offer this functionality because uh, in many of the applications you don't need to create uh, external accounts users don't want to waste their time in registering accounts so that's why api also offers the authentication feature as well so as app developers if you want to implement this feature you need to have some kind of authentication so that's why we need to have a api key api key inside the api allows you to use that api so let's suppose you want to use any of the google api let's suppose google drive api sheets api youtube data api for every api that you need to use guys you need to have a special api key for that you need to create that api key inside going to google developer console or facebook developer console so wherever you are using that api you need to have that or2 authentication enabled you need to first of all turn on the api get the access key and then you can use that api so this is all you need to also grant the uh, access as well so basically whenever user is accessing is allowing the permissions you can see externally user will have to click allow in order to grant the permission so this is meant by authentication in api so now you can see that guys in this slide basically if, whenever you want to use any sort of particular api specifically i'm talking about google apis so they have their own program called as google developer console you need to sign up inside their account so whenever you need to create a new project inside this animation you can just see here you select the project and then you go to the library section and then you enable the apis what you need to do so there are a list of apis available inside google developer console so you just need to explicitly go to that api just click the enable option to enable the api and after that on the left hand side you will see you will generate your own api key for using that particular api so after doing these two things guys you are successfully authenticated now you can successfully use these details use these api keys inside your code example wherever you are calling this api so you can successfully get the information whatever information you are looking forward to so basically every website has an api key so all the interfaces will be different for every website but specifically i have taken the example for google so facebook have will be having different interface so for every api you need to have some kind of authentication such as you need to enable the api first and then you need to get the api key as well So now lastly guys we are letting you just see the real world example how to use API inside your any programming language so specifically here we are generating a random user here and we are using react chase for this so axios is our http client which is making the request to this rest api which is hosted on random user dot me so basically on the right hand side you can see that every time if if i reload the page a random user is generated here so this api is returning this response in a json like structure so this results here we have different kinds of properties here gender 
name name is an object which has three properties title first last and we have the location object which has the street object then we have number name city state country so you can just see the structure of the response which is generated by the api guys so here we are just calling this api inside our react chess application so you can just see here we are just making a simple get api call to this endpoint which is https random user dot me slash api so basically uh, in api calls we have get method post method put method delete method all the rest api methods that are supported so rest basically as you all know it's a architecture in order to create apis so simply we are calling this rest api that is hosted on this random user website so in this way you can call an external api guys so inside your programming languages so this was the blackboard video on explaining api so thank you very much